It's the second morning of our Crow's Nest Pass exploration and adventure day. And while it's not snowing or raining right now, it is still very, very cold out here. We're just above zero degrees Celsius. And we are at the Passburg Cemetery. Now, I don't know much about Passburg, the town, other than it was pretty much a coal mining town for the employees of the Leech Collieries that we visited yesterday. So my understanding is that while the Passburg town site is long gone, shut down with the ending of the collieries, the Passburg Cemetery here still continues to see somewhat active use as it's a replacement or supplement for the Bellevue Union Cemetery, which is prone to flooding. We are continuing our tour of Crow's Nest Pass cemeteries and things with a visit to the Hillcrest Mine Disaster Memorial Park and Cemetery. Let's go take a look and see where all these people were laid to rest. If you watched the part one video, you will remember we made mention of the Hillcrest Mine Disaster, the worst single mine disaster in Canadian history, with 189 men losing their lives on June the 19th, 1914. The Crow's Nest Pass has seen its share of disasters. From Frank Slide, which occurred in 1903, which killed more than 90 people, to the Bellevue Mine Explosion in 1910 that killed 31 people, to the Hillcrest disaster that we're talking about now. Sunday, June 21st, 1914, dawned cold and gloomy. Dense white mist rolled over the valley floor between Hillcrest and Bellevue, and the chilling wind whipped snowflakes into the faces of the grave diggers as they completed the last of the mass graves. It's not hard to imagine it was a day somewhat like today. Cold, gloomy, with a bit of snow in the air. Not all the victims of the disaster are buried in the mass graves. This plaque shows the names of those that are buried in cemeteries elsewhere, either in the Crow's Nest Pass or other places. And this plaque he here lists the victims that are buried at other locations here in the Hillcrest Cemetery, just not in the mass graves. You know, on our travels, we have gone to many cemeteries of this era from, you know, the early 20th century and from towns and things around the area. But out of all of them, this is the most sobering, if you will. Um, I don't know if it's just because of the magnitude of the disaster that, uh, you know... The mass graves or or what it is but this one has a different feel from the other ones that we visited it's a very somber place let's shift our focus a bit let's go and talk about that rum running history that took place here in the crow's nest pass back in the alcohol prohibition era especially in the early 1920s we are west of coleman and driving towards bc and we're coming up on a bridge and this is a really interesting piece of history and i'm going to tell you why right now so today this looks like any bridge crossing on any sort of back road, but what we actually have here is the location of the check stop that the Alberta Provincial Police put in place during the Prohibition era. And basically, 
this is the spot. So what that means, way this, this would have been the main highway into British Columbia, and this would have been the route into Alberta. So I did not know this previously, but this was obviously an old alignment of the highway through the Crow's Nest Pass, and this is where a lot of the rum running took place. We've moved a little bit further down the road now to where the modern day road dead ends, but you can see here the road would have made this and continued here to this river crossing. Today the bridge is long gone that would have spanned the bridge here, at least for vehicular traffic, but there still is a pedestrian bridge here that we can use to cross over. So I've crossed over the pedestrian bridge now and I'm on the uh, far northwest side of the river. You can see there would have been a road crossing here at some point and it likely carried on down through here which is now just a pedestrian pathway. At least that's my speculation. I don't have anything to actually support that. So this is a pretty cool little spot here, you know, another stop along the rum running history of the Crow's Nest Pass. As I said in yesterday's uh, clips, you know, there's so many different stories to the Crow's Nest Pass. We've touched a bit on the rum running today. We've touched on a bunch of the coal mining and disasters of the area. There's just no end of things to explore here in the Crow's Nest Pass. Let's see if there's anything else we find before we get back to camp tonight. Well, of course, no visit to the Crow's Nest Pass would be complete without at least taking a moment to stop at Frank Slide. Frank Slide was a rock slide that occurred at 4.10 a.m. on April the 29th, 1903. Part of Turtle Mountain broke free, swept across the valley, and destroyed a portion of the town of Frank, killing more than 70 of the residents. The Frank Slide Interpretive Center opened in 1985 and really tells the story in great detail. It is worth a stop if you ever get the chance to visit this area. Today, the highway passes right through the middle of the slide area. I can remember being a very, very young child passing through here with my parents and being absolutely fascinated by the idea that there was a town underneath all this rock. People, animals, buildings. It was something my mind could not comprehend. And I didn't realize just how much it couldn't comprehend it until that night when I had nightmares about rocks falling in my bedroom. Frank Slide has been one of my favorite locations my entire life. Well, we've seen a lot of history and a lot of tragic history on this trip through the Crow's Nest Pass, so it seems appropriate to sign off here from the steps of the Bellevue Cafe which was the site of a very famous shootout after a train robbery in 1920. So thank you very much for coming along with us on this journey through the Crow's Nest Pass and the history of bootlegging and coal mining and a few other things along the way. Always appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We always put out uh, new content similar to this, and it's always fun to uh, follow along with us, I think, anyway. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. And here's a little bonus content for those of you that stuck around past that closing. First, a quick drive down Main Street of Bellevue here, and then we're going to head back to the campsite, and let's throw the drone up in the air and get some aerial shots of Lundbrick Falls.